Hey guys, James here. You might know me from Chase Wild. I'm one of the photographers behind Chase Wild, but I'm also the co-founder of Narrative. I'm just gonna show you a little bit of my backup and image selection workflow today. You might find it helpful. So like many people on a photo shoot, I shoot on both CF and SD card at the same time. The reason being, is that essentially I've got instantly a backup of the whole photo shoot, which is really important because we know that often memory cards shit themselves. So at the end of a photo shoot, I take the SD cards out of both of the cameras and these go into an SD card holder, which goes into my pocket. I do that straight away at the end of the shoot. And so I've got an instant backup that's separated. If I'm driving home from the wedding and I feel a little bit peckish and I want a Big Mac, then I can leave my camera bag in the car and I've got a backup on me, which is really important. If I'm shooting a destination wedding, I'll have one of these SSD hard drives with me. If you don't already have one of these, get one. They're a lifesaver, they're amazing. So this one's 500 gigs, you can get two terabyte ones. They have transfer speeds of up to, I think, 300 megabits a second. So I can transfer like 100 gigs in like 20 minutes or something like that. So I'll chuck this into my laptop and I'll do a quick backup of the photo shoot directly onto the SSD. When I get back to my office, this is where the NAS comes in. This is an 18 terabyte hard drive. Um, it's set up with something called RAID 5, which means that if any of the hard drives within here stop working, I don't lose anything. So once I return to the office, I plug the SSD into the back of the NAS and I start the backup onto here. It takes a little bit longer because it's writing onto, onto mechanical drives. And I can actually just take my laptop and leave while that copy is happening. This is set up to sync directly to my Dropbox as well. So it's connected into the network via an ethernet cable and this will automatically start an upload of the whole photo shoot and back it up into the cloud. So all I had to do to do that was to plug in the SSD and start the transfer onto that and everything else happens automatically. I like to send a little bit of a sneak peek through to the client after the photo shoot and so I do a first selection and narrative select, edit them and I make a sneak peek blog post with narrative publish. And when I'm ready to do the full image selection, I do that in narrative select. So I might just show you how that works. So this is narrative select. These are the last projects I've worked on. We're gonna jump in, we're gonna start a new project. This is actually from the recent Chase Wild workshop. So we'll just give it a name, link the source. Also, it's just gonna quickly import those images into select. Obviously, select is just really fast, which was one thing that was really important to us. Another thing you'll notice is that there are these indicator lights underneath her face and they're telling us a few things about the images. So if there's a warning circle under her face, it's telling us that the circle is in relation to the focus. So in this case, it's orange telling us that she's nearly out of focus. Here, there's no warning indicator telling us that she is in focus, which is awesome. So without needing to zoom in and check, I can tell that this image is more in focus than this image. If we did want to zoom in, you can just click the space bar and it zooms you straight into the face. And if I go left and right, you can kind of see the difference in that focus. Yeah, so the bar is the indicator for the eyes in the photograph. So here, the bar is orange, which is telling us that her eyes are partially open. And in this case, the dot is actually red. So it's telling us that her face is completely out of focus. Another feature I really like is the close-ups panel. So you open this up with a forward slash key. And as you flick through, it just shows you a full crop of the subject's face there. This is awesome for group shots, but also a lot of people love to just have this open while they're doing image selection because you can just see that full crop of their faces. It's a really nice way to be able to quickly see their expression and so forth. So once I've done my selection, um, up the top right hand corner here, there's this option ship. It ships the selected images into Lightroom. From there, I can start the editing process. So as I'm doing the editing, generally I'll look for images for social throughout the process where I'm editing and I'll quickly export them straight out of Lightroom as I edit because it's nice to have them ready when you're ready to post to social. And once I've exported, I'll do a selection of images to make a full blog post if I'm going to blog that photo shoot and I create that narrative publish and publish that directly to my website. So that's my general workflow. If you have any questions, reach out, send us a message. I'd love to answer your questions.